Hey guys, this is Shane and welcome to my Curator of the Lost channel. Today, hey, I'm going to old school and just showing you books I've found over the last week or so that for resale on Amazon and eBay and kind of giving you some comps, what I think I'll be able to get for them, what I paid for them, and you know, just uh, for your learning pleasure, if it, if it were, so that you can you can kind of see what's what I like to sell, what I like to put in my stores on, on both Amazon and eBay, and gives you ideas and trains your eyes so that when you're out there in the wild and you know, you're sourcing, you, maybe it'll, you'll, you'll remember one of those and, and you'll be able to, to, to get it, sell it for some good profit. So, um, hey, before I get into all that, I uh, just want to say thank you. Thanks for the, the channel support, uh, subscribing, viewing, longtime viewers. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for all that support. And, you know, for new guys, uh, new people coming in, hey, hit that subscribe button and, hey, we'll just keep doing it see what happens. So with that, let's jump in. Um, most of these I've got, I don't know, 10 or 12 of them. Um, most of these I found at my local uh, libraries. I think there might be one from a thrift store, but what's what's amazing to me about it, and it's something, I guess, a side point for viewers, especially for people that are new sellers, are it's this concept, and I've talked about it, you know, we've all talked about it off and on. It's the ebb and flow of sourcing, right? I had a, a thrift store that a couple of months ago, every time I went in there, I was pulling, you know, five, six books out. Just, just, I could stop by every day and pull, it was on the way home from work, it was easy jet in, right? And I was pulling tons of stuff. That thrift store has dried up. What's funny, I've noticed they raised their prices. I thought, well, that might even cut down on what people are buying. But their book stock seems to be just be low. I don't know if it's donations here in the summer. And I have noticed uh, several people when I'm either going in or leaving that are scanners, you know, and they're scanning. So maybe it's getting hit harder, but in general, I just, there's, there's the stock that they're carrying is so low. It's, it's actually one of those that I, I've kind of stopped going in as often because until I see some more donations and see their stock, it's not worth the time. So it's that ebb and flow. If you're a, if you're a new seller, you know, it happens. And that's why you, you, you work to get multiple sourcing avenues, whether that's estate sales, whether that's um, your library bookstores, you know, the thrift stores, you know, don't just don't just have one because something can happen to it, or it could just be the natural ebb and flow. So, so here are the things I found with some comps. Okay, um, this first one, there's a National Audubon Society fossils. This is about a fifteen dollar book. I got this for a dollar. Um, I see some of these quite often in the, the in you know this style of thing. And it's not necessarily, a lot of them are not the National Audubon Society when you find them, these guidebooks to nature. A lot of them are, um, there's a Peterson's Guide. And I find the Peterson's quite often, and most of the time for what they're selling for, there's just not enough meat on the bone. But this Audubon Guide is actually about a $15 book, um, so it'll be good to pay for a dollar for it. Here's one Easy Taro Handbook. I'm showing this is about a $12 book. I got this one for 50 cents, so... Um, that's good. You can see the one library I got, it's the one that uses the dots, right? Blue is for, 50, blue means 50 cents. Um, here's one that I got, a textbook. I actually paid four bucks for this one, but on Amazon, this is a Radar Principles by this, uh, uh, Levinon. It's, um, I'm showing it's selling for about 90 bucks on Amazon. So it has some previous owner names on it, but I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to send this into Amazon price it right. I can make $70 profit on this, even at, even at $4, um, you know, with fees, even buying it for four bucks, make 70 bucks profit on it. It had an e-score of like, um, I think that one had an e-score of 10, maybe it wasn't real, maybe 20, you know, so this is not selling every day, but it should sell maybe like, you know, one, one a month or, you know, something like that. So I think Amazon's the place for it for that. Now here's some interesting ones I got at my library. They weren't priced and the lady said, oh, I'll take a dollar for them. The, uh, look on these little pamphlets. And I don't have comps on these yet, but it's a sort of just weird thing I'll get, right? And I may put these to, together, um, but it's this Clark School of Traction Engineering. Then there's a steam engines. You can see a tractor on there, steam engine guide. And then uh, there's another one, traction engine troubles and it's all about i think this you know it's all about tractors and steam engines and you know anyway i'll put them together they'll sell um 
here's one this, this there's this one little niche area that i go to in, in my library that's kind of like miscellaneous and i guess it's things that they don't know where you know it's not history it's not biology it's not physics it's not arts and crafts they just throw the stuff in it I, I tend to find i must i'm probably like their best customer on on this particular uh, section but here was one on this browning uh arms and history by west um actually i couldn't find this on amazon um it's not pulled up anything but i see it sold two of them sold on ebay one for 35 one for 45. this one's got some see it's got a little cover got a little trigger bites on it as they say but i think it's still good for 30 bucks and i paid you can see they write the price in there look there you go truth in advertising pay 50 cents for it so that'll be good all right here's one i paid a quarter for this one the story of ocracoke island this is uh in north carolina uh, you know, it's just a little pamphlet. You know, it's got a lot of shipwrecks. I think this is like where, um, I've never been there, but I think this is like Blackbeard, the pirate kind of area, you know? So, uh, I'll list this. I think somebody will dig it. Um, got it for a quarter. It's worth it. All right, here's one. Now, this is a, um, a genre or a, a little niche area that's good, and it's on bird hunting, right? This dancers in the sunset sky. Uh, I paid a dollar for this one and it's the, you see here, it's the musings of a bird hunter. I find bird hunting and bird dogs, um, that kind of thing, right? It's kind of more, it's not just hunting, you know, it's, um, it's, you know, this, this whole specialized bird hunting. Uh, this one, this is like a $30 book. So, um, probably we'll send this one to Amazon, but we'll see. It's clean. All right, now here's one that's kind of, I don't know, it may creep you out, may freak you out, but I find some of this stuff quite often. Here's a treasury of witchcraft. This is about a $30 book. Um, it's not in great condition. Again, look at there, paid 50 cents for it. Um, better condition, commands higher price, but even in this condition with, you know, surface wear, it's a solid $30 book. So um, I find, you know, there's stuff, stuff like this that you find, you know, is published, this was probably in the 60s. Let's see if I can find a date on it. Uh, let's see, Roman numerals, 1961. This was published in 1961. I've seen several kind of in this kind of genre. Again, so it's, it's a genre to keep your eye out for. A good $30 book. All right, we talked about before, I found this, this role playing, you know, beyond the supernatural. You're, you might be familiar, you know, with like Dungeons and Dragons and that sort of thing. So, uh, or Warhammer, right? Those are nice RPGs, role-playing games. But this is a company, they come out with some different ones. It's Palladium. And so there's two or three smaller companies that aren't part of like that, you know, Wizards of the West Coast or TSR or, you know, or the uh, Games Workshop that does the Warhammer. They're smaller ones and it's more off the beaten specialized ones but still I'll, i get these and i like to sell them they're they're fun um let's see i paid here we go paid paid a dollar for it i see this one it's like twenty dollar this is like the you know the the rule book right so this sort of thing is great to find and and keep your eye out for here's one not a high dollar book history photos san francisco it's actually this thing, it looks like it's, it's like more of a coffee table book, a little bit bigger. It looks like it's never been even read. It's not a high dollar book. This will be 15 bucks. Um, I paid $1.50 for it. I liked it. I got it because it was just in such great condition. Um, and then I found this Auburn University down on the Plains, uh, 1956 yearbook. Uh, I paid a dollar for it. Oh, it's funny. I went in the library and I looked it up and it didn't have a price. It was on the shelf. And I said, what's the price for that? And they said, uh, we don't know. What, how about a dollar? I said, okay, fine. And they said that a lady had just dropped it off and she had four, uh, she had like 1953 to 56. And, uh, she didn't want to leave her name. They weren't sure they would sell. And so they said, well, how about just leave one and you can bring the others back later. <laughs> like next week so i said well if she comes back i mean you should just get all of them because they will sell i mean especially for a dollar each this is the sort of thing if i look on on ebay there's a ton of them and they're 20 they're 15 to 30 dollars yearbooks in general if i find them at the right price i like them they're 
they can sit on your shelf a long time, but they're kind of unique. Especially like the old ones. There's some cool, cool stuff in it. I'm a sucker for them, I guess. It's, you know, they're, they're bigger. You got to have a box or something that'll fit them. They're a little bit oversized, but I enjoy selling them. I enjoy looking at the old photos and what the old, um, uh, you know, like departments of the school had and how it changed over time. But it was kind of funny. They, they, they got a kick out that I'd bought it like 30 minutes after she dropped it off and then she had three more that she may bring back, but she didn't want to leave her name to let them call her if it did sell. But so it's kind of, kind of, kind of comical. They got a kick out of it at the library. So that's what I bought. So that's it. Um, kind of some eclectic mix of stuff, uh, some genres and things for you to train your eye and keeping your, keeping your mind. You know, I got some good stuff, cheap, cheap price stuff. That's going to have great resale value there. I probably had I don't know, even with the $4 book, I probably had maybe $10 worth of stuff there and resale potential there's probably two to 300. I hadn't added it up, but it's, it adds up, especially with that one textbook, the $4 book bring in, you know, I think it's got $70 profit there. So a couple hundred dollars profit probably. So anyway, that's it. Remember what I say, see cool, buy cool, train that eye, get out there, find good stuff. And remember if the place that you're in, the place that you're buying from is drying up. If you're in that natural ebb and flow, don't, don't get discouraged, you know, think out of the box. We'll go to different places, check out state sales, uh, antique malls, um, flea markets, put ads in the paper, whatever you need to do to get them there, you'll get it. So uh, just see cool, buy cool, and then all else works out. But you gotta list it and sell it. So, all right, talk to you soon. Take care, bye.